Good morning. It's just after 7 a.m. in the morning and I thought I would do a quick recap of the uh, back garden uh, for you and it's the end of July. So we'll do a quick recap of how the plants are doing. Now we just had a very heavy rain yesterday so everything is just looking absolutely lush and gorgeous and I thought this will be the best time to show it to you uh, before we get into August and things are gonna start to look a little worried then so I'm in the back garden right now and remember that um, in the previous video uh, I've mentioned that this garden faces north so we've got lots of hydrangeas that are in bloom right now and this this is just after seven, so you can kind of see that the sun is, so this is this is west, right? Oh, sorry, this is east, and I'm staying on the west side of the uh, garden right now, and north is this way, so you're looking at east right now, and you can see that the view, I think the view here is actually very, very beautiful. So we've got lots of, um, like if you look here, right, we've, this is my Invincible Wee White right here. And then I have lots of the Dianthus, I forget what uh, variety, but I think it's Pink Fusion, uh, lined up the border here that are in blooms right now. And then I've got some of the little um, Hostas that line the uh, border as well. So here's my Invincible Wee White. This is a Penstemon called uh, Dakota Burgundy, I believe. Um, I thought there were something else, but they're actually Dakota Burgundy. So the uh, hydrangea here, this hydrangea here is the Firelight that I recently planted. And uh, you can kind of see that the last time I did it, the blooms were just turning white. But they're now a nice um, sort of a pale shade of pink, right? And if you recall the photo that I had, they're going to turn to that deep reddish uh, color. And that's exactly how they normally look. So this year, I'm not sure how it's gonna turn out, but the previous year, they weren't as red as the ones in the photo. But who knows, with the constant heat that we've been getting within the, um, the summer so far, um, we might gonna be in for a beautiful fall show so like I'll come a little closer you can see that the color it's now that beautiful pale pink um, so the blooms I noticed that these blooms here sort of open up a little bit later so they're a bit still more white but this one you can see that they're a bit older and the pink has already uh, been established right and if you look close enough, you'll see a little bit of iron chlorosis here with the uh, yellowing of the leaf. Now, I did treat it with um, some magnesium uh, sulfate, which is the Epsom salt stuff. But, uh, and it did help a little bit, but I need to um, sort of treat it with some iron tone, which for me, it's been very difficult to get because um, the stores, are not carrying as many variety of different um, stuff as they usually uh, do. So anyway, we'll wait till things get better and I'll be able to get more um, chemicals like iron tone to treat it for this uh, this plant. Now, right next to it here, I have a Maynite Salvia and it did bloom already twice since uh, May and I've had to cut it back and you can see that there's lots of blooms forming on it as well now, right? So it's gonna go into its third show. And I'm sorry about the noise, it is garbage day for us here. And then right behind that, I've got my, um, my uh, Latchfield Angel. I've got um, David Austin Roses. I've got one here, two, three. And uh, I did feed it after the first uh, bloom. And you can see, that there are now uh, lots of uh, buds forming on it. And if you live in my area, you probably know what these guys are, right? These are the Japanese beetles and they 
when they go through they pretty much eat everything so you can see that that was a bloom that came out just give, give me a sec here um, that was a bloom that just recently came out let me just pinch it up while I'm here before I forget um, and uh, it literally ate everything and uh, now this one I'm a little worried that it won't have time to establish properly and bloom because the look when they go through the Japanese beetle they eat everything so here's one bloom I'll show you that just started to open up today and this is like that apricot pink creamy apricot pink that I absolutely adore and I would say that this is one of the most beautiful roses in my garden because of the, just the way that they the petals form that cup like it's just absolutely gorgeous and it's gonna open up to a lighter color creamy white which is very beautiful as well but you can see there's lots of buds here like they're all forming here right so eventually we're going to have another beautiful show and hopefully i'll be able to update you um with some videos on that and here's my clematis um i've got three of them here planted uh i've got a western platy which is like that burgundy red and then i also have a pilu which is that uh lavender pink and then i have a uh, white one which i always forget um, the name but anyway they're out of bloom right now and after they've done with their first set of bloom what i normally do is i cut it back halfway and let them flush back up and give me another show in September. But the second show that I get in September, it's never as beautiful as the first. But you know what, the only way that I could encourage more bloom is to cut them way back to let them, uh, the new growth back up and form new flowers, which I haven't been able to do yet because of the uh, heat wave that we've been getting. But I'm hoping to uh, do that ASAP so that it has time to flush back up again. And then right, next to it I've got an uh, incredible which I had to remove and replanted because it was just getting way too crowded in this area here so I didn't cut it back like I normally do in the spring so I left the stems grown so you can see the woody stems on it right and because of that the blooms are much much smaller but if I could find a photo from last year I'll pop them up they were the size of like a football or soccer ball almost and it was just overflowing this area and that was crowding it and here i have a um i forget the name now anyway um i'll pop that up on the screen later on the name but this adds just a nice sort of evergreen texture and color that it's got that sort of a, a church use greenish yellow and it's just absolutely gorgeous and um, it has this nice backdrop to me it anchors the space so that there's something out here for winter interest which I love and then I have my limelight here sorry about the sun the harsh sunlight so this limelight I did a little bit uh, different uh, trimming uh, this year so instead of trimming it some of it back in the uh, in the late fall and then do some more trimming in the winter. I left it all the way till um, this past um, Late winter early spring and then I cut it back so you can see that these blooms here that have came out these were probably because I uh, trimmed it off um, Later in the winter so it has time to establish the blooms and these ones here. I trimmed it back much uh, like uh, like after I've trimmed these ones here so the blooms have just um, sort of developed and they're not open yet but that's okay so I'm gonna get these turning sort of a, a church shoes green well these will come out white soon right so it's just variety Dif I thought I'd try different something different but you can see well you can see my shadow there <laughs> but you can see that um, these blooms here are kind of droopy right because of the rain that we had and because of the size of the blooms that 
sort of make them more, um, more heavy so they kind of flop to uh, down a little bit but you can kind of see that that the blooms sorry about I'm gonna use my body as a shadow but you can see that how dense the the uh, the flowers are right and that's the main reason why the blooms are just super heavy on these stems and besides these stems they're not quite as strong so you can see here like how this is the size now I should have trimmed it back a little bit more uh, and let the stems grow but anyway um, I remember to trim it back differently next year so that way I'll be able to see uh, the difference in their growth habit right but anyway the more branching they get the, the more flowers but the smaller the size though so the few branches they I leave on the larger the blooms so you can see down here I've got it in the back corner there it's hard to see now I'm sorry um, the back corner there that's um, a light pink peony that was given to me by my mom so I usually uh, sort of get like a good show but this year for some reason I didn't get too many blooms on them but anyway and that uh, could be because it's not getting enough sunlight because this limelight is just getting way too big for that so anyway so I might have to consider moving it somewhere else um, and then right in front of that I've got my other David Austin rose which is an eglantine that light blush pink um, so you can see that um, it's starting to form tons and tons of buds ready for the next show and I'll show you again what the Japanese beetle has done to this plant look at the leaf on that look at that it literally eats through everything so anyway um, so you can see that it's starting to there it is more buds lots of buds on these so they'll eventually um, open up and then right next to that I've got the um, endless summer boom uh, bloom now this um, was recently planted or actually transferred it was somewhere else and I had to transfer it here and it um, I don't have a lot of blooms on this this year from old growth but I'm hoping that eventually by the um, the well mid August I'll be able to see some blooms on these because they usually uh, I didn't protect them and so um, I'm expecting the blooms on the new growth will come out uh, soon so right next to that and you can see that's the same thing here I've got a hedge of uh, hydrangea bobo right here I've got tons of them planted here so I've got one bobo here two and then I've got a little one here that I just planted three four and then I've got five six so six bobos planted as a sort of like a hedge um, so eventually this little guy will grow and get the same size as the rest so next year hopefully it'll be a better show but the, the blooms on the bobos in the back garden right now, they are just absolutely gorgeous. And again, I'm really sorry about the harsh sunlight, but you can see the angle here, right? This is just one plant. It was a two gallon sized plant. And not too long ago, they look like that. So, you know, it doesn't take too long for, to, for them to get to their full size. And they're supposed to be two to three feet tall. So these guys are just above two feet tall and uh, above two feet wide. And this one as well, right? And you can see in the back here, I mean, in the corner here, I've got the uh, daylily. It's the happy return daylily from Prumer Winners. And next to that, I've got an English boxwood in the corner there that I usually trim that into a ball. And that, I will pop the name up because I don't quite remember the name now, but it's supposed to grow to about maximum one to two uh, feet. Uh, tall and wide so I, I usually trim it back uh, into sort of a, a steer so it looks quite pretty and then I've got a um, Asiatic lily I don't remember what the name of the variety I don't remember if it came, ever came in a, in a tank but it's like that light yellow color and they 
our apps, the scent on these are absolutely amazing. And I love it, love it because of the, the scent and the pale yellow color that kind of goes well with this area. And then back here, look at this. This is the Sonic Bloom Wigelia Pearl. And we're in the, the end of July and this is what it looks like. So I normally get a show in, um, sorry about the noise. <laughs> um, it's gar like I said earlier, it's garbage day. Um, this is, uh, we're at the end of July and it's still blooming. Isn't that amazing? And like I did something differently this year where I actually trimmed it back all the way and it's flushed back up now. I, I turned it back all the way at, at the uh, end of uh, winter to about like very small. I forget that maybe one foot or just above one foot tall and, and, and wide. And since then it has put up so much growth. Like if you look at the stem here, it's about like halfway up the fence. My the fence board is about six foot. This is about three feet right now. And it's been constantly blooming throughout the summer. And so I'm expecting it to be, um, you know, like bigger, I guess. Cause it's supposed to be three to five feet tall and wide. So every time it puts out new bloom, like you can see, I've got this stem here and there's lots of tons of buds still forming on them. So I'm expecting more blooms uh, all the way till fall. And anyway, it's just really stunning for me this summer. I'm really, really loving it. And then right behind that, I've got another penstemon. And um, I think the variety it's the same as the other one that I have planted next to the Invincible Wee White. Um, so it is um, the um, Dakota Burgundy again. And I love it because it has that nice sort of deep um, red color that puts gives it a nice contrast next to the Wegelia. And then I've got another um, uh, peony here. It's a white color. A peony that my mom gave me. I don't know what the variety is. And then I've got more Asiatic lilies. I've got some of these uh, deep purple um, iris here that come up in the spring. And I've got another astilbe that's out of bloom. But the blooms, the dry blooms on them are just still like it's. It, I, I think that the seed heads are just really beautiful, so I don't cut them back, but I should, right? Like, if you don't like it, you can cut it back, but I normally leave it on and cut it back later. And then I've got the other astilbe here, that amethyst pink, that's quite gorgeous as well. And I got this from my husband um, for Mother's Day, I think, a, a, number, a number of years ago. And it was planted in my previous home, and I had to take it out because I love plants that bring have sentimental value. So I had them uh, planted here in this garden. Um, now, the right next to it, it's a um, a uh, standard of uh, lava lamp lava. I'm sorry, the name name lava lamp flare uh, that I've uh, done uh, this year, and. Anyway, it's I'm, ho I'm hoping that it will survive, but you can see some of the uh, growth on here. It's kind of dried up, but hopefully it will survive. But this one is still okay. So if it does survive, it's gonna become a small little standard tree in this spot. So I'm hoping that it will survive. So I'll give you more updates on, on that later. And, um, and I have a few more that I created on the other side of the garden that I'll show you later. I've got another Mayonite Salvi here. Um, and we're going to move around to this corner here. So this was my Mother's Day gift for 2020. This is a uh, Nepeda cat's pajama. Um, anyway, I'll pop the tag up just in case I get the name wrong. But I had when I had it, it was full, in full bloom with this thick uh, purple blue um, blooms and I love this and the whole entire uh, store I think my husband got it from um, 
Home Depot and it had only one left. Like I would have liked at least a few, but who knows what they're gonna be like. So hopefully with uh, next year, when we're out of the quarantine, we'll be able to, um, you know, have more shipment in the stores and, and they'll be able to, um, you know, uh, have more of them and I'll be able to pick up a few more. But since I cut it back up, it's sending out so many new stocks. So I'm hoping for a beautiful show in the next few days um, or so. And then next to that, I have uh, fescue, blue fescue grass uh, that kind of like border this sort of, you can see another one here. So I've got them sort of spaced out throughout the, uh, and another one here as well, spaced out throughout the garden. All right. And then let's go around this way now. So you saw this, this is the firelight. And then I've got more of that Asiac light color, light yellow, Asiac lily. And then I've got a cone boxwood here um, that I recently planted, I believe, last year. Uh, the year before that, I had, um, I think it was a little devil, uh, I forget the name now, it was a little devil. But anyway, um, and it, I had it here, but it was just getting way too crowded. So I had to give it away and planted something uh, more evergreen. I want something more evergreen to anchor the space here. And I'm hoping to, um, to anyway, for them to grow a little bit bigger and I can shape them into uh, different topiaries that I like. And then I've got more of that Asiatic lilies here that are just finishing up. Um, blooming and then I've got a trellis here that I've got two um, two clematis clematises on here um, this one is a tranquility and it's not blooming as well as it did last year right and it's just finished with its first set of bloom and it's supposed to be more free blooming and that's why I got it and this is another uh, it's a Giselle clematis as well and I love it because of the star-like flower shape, right? So um, this was planted at the end of July last year. So this July, it's the first year that it's in the space. So usually with clematis, they say first year, they um, they sort of, they, they go to sleep, right? So that I'm assuming this is, this is their sleeping year. And then next year, they'll start to creep up more on the, uh, trellis and then the third year they'll leap so I'm expecting a better show for next year and then right in front of that um, this is a um, I think a black eye Susan um, plant this is just in bloom I only have one uh, stem of that I used to have a much bigger um, sort of bush at the front of the garden but it was just getting way too crowded so I gave everything away and just kept one um, stem from memory and I took it back here and put it right in front of the um, the clematis, the trellis, just so that I have something in this space. And around that I have another Maynite salvia and another Maynite salvia here that's about to put on another show, right? And then surrounding that I have lots of columbine seeds that I've kind of scattered throughout the garden and um, I think if you... Uh, watch my video you'll see that these are the product of the two clamat um, not clamat sorry the two uh, columbine purple and red and they bloom beautifully in um, early spring and um, anyway you can go back and see that video and here is my um, bobo standard hydrangea that I created last year so last year if you remember the other standard um, so last year, um, sorry, they looked like the standard that I showed you earlier, the lava lamp flare standard, with just a couple of, uh, sort of buds, uh, on them. And so now you can see that it's starting to take on the shape of a tree, right? So now I've got one, two, three, four stems here, and each stem carries a panicle. So this will eventually... Um, get more bushy next year and will look like a proper standard tree and that's sort of how I do it so the first year they look 
not quite nice they kind of look like the one like that one that I just showed you earlier but the next year hopefully that will look like this and then I'll show you another one that I've created on the uh, in a little bit and that will look like a beautiful like that actually looks quite much like a tree and then in front of that I have a um, blue jangles I think uh, it's a big leaf hydrangea and again it did not um, perform well for me it had a lot of dieback in the um, winter and I only pretty much have one bloom from the uh, old growth from last year and this is a sort of a lavender uh, purple pink see how beautiful that looks. so I did treat it with um, some um, chemicals to well sulfur actually I treat it with sulfur to um, change the pH of the soil hoping to get uh, lavender or purple like blooms and I did get it but the problem is um, I don't have a lot of blooms on these from the old growth so I'm hoping that they'll start to set um, blooms on new growth soon I'll, I'll be able to see more blooms um, in the next couple weeks or in the next uh, three four weeks or so and in front of that it's my other columbine that I've let kind of let it come to seed. So you can see there's lots and lots of seed heads that I will start to collect and give away to, um, to people. So lots of my friends always ask for these and neighbors as well. And I usually save the seeds. I mean, if I could, like if I cut this all the way back, the new blooms will come up. And it has been blooming, as you can see, it has been blooming, you know, nonstop since the, um, this at uh, the beginning of I think I think uh, mid-May I think it's when it first started blooming but I let it sort of set seed and then you can see more dianthus this is another um, hosta and this is another blue jangle um, big leaf blue jangle that I have here and again no blooms yet all die back from old growth now if I wanted more uh, blooms on these from the old growth I could protect it but it's just way too much work and I and I really I always forget to protect them so I kind of let nature do its uh, thing and if um, they don't perform I may replace them with something else next year and then I've got more uh, columbine here that are also having it set to seed as well and then right behind it on the other side of right here on the other side of the trellis right here's the uh, cone boxwood and then I've got another one here uh, as well and then I've got a lot more of those uh, Asiatic lilies right next to them and they anchor the space that I have it's planted with something so anyway it's going to turn out beautiful uh, this year because like I said, it's been in this phase for a few years now. So it has some time to sort of uh, grown grow to its full size, but you can see the beautiful blooms on these This is one of my favorite and like I said, I was expecting it to be the same size as the bobo But as it turned out, they're a little bit bigger than the bobo so far because this stem here is almost about with in including to the top of the, the pentacle it's about almost four feet tall and then right next to it I've got more of that penstemon the Dakota burgundy and you can see the contrast with the leaf here right so this gets more sun than the other location and you can see the contrast in the leaf and because of that I love this plant and I'm hoping that it will flush out and become a bigger bush here and then right behind that I've got another um, firelight hydrangea and look how gorgeous this is and you can see like it's a little bit different than your the limelight or the bobo right like the the blooms are a little bit the leaf the leaf they're a little bit bigger and they're not as dense or as big i mean they're big but they're not as dense so the blooms are just gorgeous and they don't flop too i've got a lot more floral smaller ones here which um which because I left out uh, more stems, so the blooms, there are more of them 
uh, but they're smaller in size. And you can kind of see this one also as well. It's starting to change color to that blush pink, right? Now, lots of them are as well. So in the next few weeks or so, they'll color up beautifully. And then coming along this way, I've got more of the Columbine, more of the Dianthus, more of the little um, Hosta, and then more of the Maynite Salvia here. And they're starting to form lots of buds on them right there, see? So they'll put up a new show pretty soon. And Columbine here, and then here are the roses that I've got. So I don't know if you remember, but I wanted three more of another kind here, David Austin. But when I went last year around this time, they didn't have three of the same kind. So I ended up getting three different ones. So this is a Marie Rose, or Rose Marie, Marie Rose. I forget, I'll pop the name up. Um, this is another Lightsphere Angel, which um, I'll come up close so you can see the bloom. And then here, this is the Evelyn. Now I did cut these back and they're starting to put up some more uh, buds so i'm expecting um the blooms to come out pretty soon so you can see like more buds here so here is the eglantine here there's another bloom on here so this is an older bloom here that's fading I, this is another older bloom as well so they're like a creamy white color um as they fade whereas when they first come out they come out as that sort of um apricot cream apricot color pink and then right in front of that, I've got another hedge of uh, bobo hedge. And so I've got one here, two, three, and here is the bobo standard that I showed you um, in one of my other videos. And here it is. Isn't that gorgeous? So if you remember the, the uh, bobo that I just showed you in the other corner, that was how this looked last year. And I'll come a little closer so you can see. So this is the a whole canopy of this bobo right now and this is the one stem now last year the stem was much more flimsy like the one that i showed you earlier but look how how thick it has it has grown right so i had to kind of hold it upright with the stem right next to it so i'm hoping next year the other standard will look like this look how how beautiful that look it actually looks like a tree right and I think um, I would do a video on how I normally um, do this so you'll be able to see it because I've got a stem on this uh, bubble here that I could actually create another um, standard here and I'll right here so I'm gonna make this I'm gonna turn this into a um, sorry it's hard to show well but this branch here how it's hanging so i leave that and then when i uh, create the standard out of that i will um show you how i normally do it so so you can see the hedge of bobo so compared to the other side this is a little bit behind and you can see kind of see that it's about like a week behind the other side right there's lots more green on the bobo right now whereas the other side they're more fluffy white so you can see this one's a little bit further ahead, but the majority of them still have more green on them, right? Which is fine. I don't mind that so that I get different um, different bloom times. So here I've got another Clematis, and this is the Abilene, I think, um, Clematis. And then I've got another one, a Tranquility, that light uh, purple blue color. And you can see there's lots of new growth that are coming out. And again, these were planted around this time last year. So I will expect a better show from them uh, next year. And then I've got another uh, Incredible here. And again, the same thing, they were just crowding this whole entire space. So I had to move them and replant. And I kind of kept the one stem here, but next year I will cut them all the way back and let the new growth. And then I have another uh, Arborita here, which I will pop out the name. And then right in front of that, I also have another Endless Summer um, blue meringue um, hydrangea in front of it and you can see that this one is a little bit further ahead compared to the other one and again they were also transferred to this to this location last year around this time so you can see that this is the old bloom for the from the bloom struck and it's got that that 
nice pink and then the brown is from the um, the um, the dry flower so the you can see that look at the the new blooms that the, um, the panicles the new panicles that it's sending out now it's in the broccoli stage so in the next few weeks I will expect every one of these to be um, forming blooms on them but you can kind of see that it's a little bit taller so this one's about two foot like the same height as the bobo whereas the other one's a little bit shorter so I think this is going to be um, a sort of bigger plant compared to the other side which I have no clue why because they both get I think a lot of sun this one gets more afternoon sun whereas the other one gets more morning sun so um, I'm not sure how that's gonna turn out uh, later and then right next to it like the other side I have the other eglantine rose and then behind that I've got a pensament beer tongue as well so you can see because it's being shaded by this limelight here that it's not coloring the leaf is not coloring out uh, as red as the other one and then I've got the other I think this is a darker pink peony here and this one bloomed okay but again not as well as um, it did the year before again perhaps because of this limelight right and look at this limelight right now it's grown so much bigger than it did last year and if you compare this limelight I'm gonna move around the corner here if you compare this limelight to the other limelight in the corner this um, puts out bloom and it's a little bit further ahead of the other one so you can kind of see that the blooms are almost all of them are fully open right and they're uh, more of that churchill's white with the uh, creamy white with the green tip here and you can see that because of the blooms are much much heavier than the ones on the firelight with the heavy rain that we had yesterday they're starting to flop a little bit right now probably not because of, of the the rain but more so because of the size of the stems and the size of the blooms on them so i'm hoping that if the stems get a little bit more sturdier they'll be able to hold up the blooms much much better and you can see here i've got more bobo as well right and then more of that um that uh, happy return day lily more of the blue fescue grass so it's just so you exactly repeat of the other side but this is a um, salvia that I got, ooh, I don't remember, last year. So it did die back completely and um, I thought it wasn't going to survive. But somehow, magically, one stem came up. So this one's a little bit, the blooms, the callip, they're a little bit bigger than the mainite salvia. So anyway, um, you can see that it's a little bit shorter, I think. But um, it didn't survive well, so I'm hoping that it will be a bigger plant next year and uh, and put on a better show next year and then behind that I just have the same arrangement as I have on the other side this is the amethyst astilbe that light pink astilbe I have and this one is a an endless summer twist and shout it's a twist and shout I believe anyway I'll pop the name up on the screen again I had a lot of dieback this year, so I'm not getting a lot of blooms from the old growth, but I'm hoping that by the end of August, I'll be able to see more blooms on them. So right next to that, I have the Endless Summer Original, and it was um, it was much bigger next, last year, I believe. But anyhow, uh, somehow I had so much dieback, I cut everything back. I thought it was actually dead, but somehow it grew back and I'm getting amazingly one, two, three blooms on this. And right in front of that, I have some more of that purple uh, iris and then um, my bobo here. And then right in front of this plant, I know I'm gonna have to move this, but I'm getting this patio uh, sort of reconfigured and I'm hoping that I could transplant this um, into its new home so this is a um, vanilla strawberry uh, hydrangea and it's 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 gonna be way too big for this space but when I got it last year it was in a two gallon size plant and it was quite small 
and uh, just in one year it has put up so much growth like it literally had one stem last year and now it's put up so much growth I've got tons of stem and this is like this whole thing here is just one plant so I'm hoping to transplant it to a different location um, when I get this patio done so I'm hoping like to extend like change the shape of this patio and then extend it all the way here like that and then I will put that vanilla strawberry right here because this is supposed to grow to about six I believe 68 feet tall and wide so I need definitely need more space for that but here I want to show you this this is my latest rose this is William Morris and it's got that sort of apricot deeper apricot peachy color of blooms I don't have the tag with me right now but I'll do a separate video for this one day um, so the tag shows that the blooms are supposed to be a little bit bigger but that's okay this is the first year that they're in this spot and so usually they don't perform as well now when I got it it was right I think at the beginning of June when the uh, nursery was just open and so there were not too many David Austin roses and um, I got one of these and a friend of mine got one of these but hers did not come out like this hers was a white so I think it was mislabeled but luckily mine came out um, the correct color <laughs> so you can see that it's supposed to be a little bit taller so I thought I'll, I'll, get, I'll put it on this trellis and let it grow like a, a climbing rose but and because it's only been um, in this spot for almost two months, it hasn't grown to its full size yet. So I'm hoping that it will flush out and put on a better show. But you can see that there's lots of buds on these. Like one, two, three, four, five. And then this side as well. And there's another bloom that just opened as well. See that? But the scent on this is beautiful as well. And then I have one here that bloomed earlier. As you can see. So it does fade to that sort of blush pink, like the eggling thyme as well. But um, these are really, really gorgeous. And I love roses that have that pale blush um, apricot. This is one of my, this is the, probably the, the color is the, my favorite um, color in roses, I mean. They kind of go with the, the scheme of the garden as you can see. Um, and then right in front of it, just like the other side, I have another uh, boxwood and the um, Happy Return, the Lily. Anyhow, I'm going to have to say uh, goodbye for now. And uh, I want to thank you so much for watching the video. And uh, if you have subscribed, I want to thank you so much as well for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe for more of my latest video. So I will, I will uh, hopefully talk to you soon. Have a great, wonderful day. Bye-bye now.